It was on May 17th, 1807, that a baby girl was born. There is nothing unusual about that. However, this baby would go on to become a murderer. She would become the last woman in England to be hanged for the murder of her own infant. The baby, Rebecca Pryor, was born in the Wiltshire village of Bratton, close to the town of Westbury. Her parents were William and Sarah Pryor. William was a successful yeoman farmer and her mother was a prominent member of the local particular Baptists. It would seem that Rebecca had the kind of family to give her a good start in life, a time when poverty was rife and life could be very hard. Rebecca fell in love with a local man, Philip Smith, an agricultural labourer. Philip had a reputation as a drunkard, something that would have concerned her mother. Her father, William Pryor, died in 1830 and might not have been aware of the relationship that would blossom into marriage in May 1831. The couple moved a few miles along the road to live in Westbury. Philip and Rebecca's first child, Jane, was born the following year, 1832. Life was hard for farm labourers and their families. For the newlyweds, money would have been in short supply and made worse by a man who drank a lot. Ten more children would follow the birth of Jane, and each one would die fairly soon after birth. The second child, a boy, died of a bowel complaint after 14 weeks. The rest, apart from the 11th, died within a day or two of their birth. I will get back to the 11th child in a moment. Rebecca's mother died in 1846, and she inherited a hundred pounds, a sum that could have made an incredible difference to her life in those days. Did it? No. Her husband squandered the money. She had to become a seasonal crop picker to survive. According to accounts, it said that the family lived in a visible state of poverty and ill health. The final child to be born, and the eleventh, was Richard. He arrived on May 16th, 1849. A healthy baby boy should have been a reason for joy. It wasn't long after the birth when Rebecca began telling neighbours, My little boy is wasting away. That seemed strange to them, for they had seen the baby and he looked healthy. Baby Richard was taken ill on June 7th and died a few days later on the 12th. George Shoreland, the local registrar, recorded the cause of death as unknown. The registrar was persuaded by local rumours to order an inquest. Richard's body was exhumed on June 22nd and on the 24th an autopsy was carried out. Tests showed traces of arsenic in the baby's stomach. Rebecca's neighbours claimed she had made a series of attempts to purchase arsenic before and after the birth, finally successfully doing so on the morning of June the 7th when the baby became ill. Two more of her babies, Sarah and Edward, were exhumed and inquests were held on July 18th. Both bodies contained traces of arsenic. Rebecca went on trial for the murder of her recently deceased baby, Richard, on August the 9th. The jury found her guilty but stated to the judge, It is our painful duty to pronounce the prisoner guilty, but we strongly recommend her to mercy. The judge inquired on what ground when the foreman answered, that she might have time to repent. The judge did not agree, and sentenced Rebecca to be hanged. Two petitions to spare the life of Rebecca were made to the Home Secretary. She was a poor and unwell woman. The request fell on deaf ears, and she was condemned to execution. From within her death cell in Devizes Prison, Rebecca told her story. She said that she had been physically and sexually abused by her drunkard husband. Next, she went on to confess that after the second child died, the following seven she killed with poison. The tenth died of natural causes, and the eleventh was Richard, for whose murder she would now hang. In my research, I have found three days given for the hanging, Thursday, August 23rd, and the 24th, in the Times report of September the 2nd. In Hans's parliamentary record it states Saturday 25th. Some other accounts say it was a Saturday and this seems the most reliable. The huge crowd who turned up to watch were most likely available on a Saturday. 
It is said that from nine until eleven o'clock people poured into town, in shoals on foot, in wagons, in boats. The Kenneth Navin Canal passes close to the prison, which is now a housing estate, and by the latter hour the prison yard, the banks of the canal, and every tree, hedge and field that could command a view of the drop, appeared crammed, says the report. Shortly before twelve noon the bell tolled, and Rebecca Smith was ushered from her cell to the gallows outside of Devizes prison, the chaplain reading out the sermon for the condemned during that solemn walk. A contemporary account described her demeanour as she awaited death. Her conduct was most becoming. Mild and contented in her manner and deportment, it might be thought that she was totally incapable of the unnatural crime of which she was convicted. Free from guile or hypocrisy, she at once and hesitatingly confessed her crime, and acknowledged the justice of the punishment that awaited her, and frequently expressed a hope that others would take warning by her fate. At the same time, she was extremely ignorant, and betrayed a want of any deep feeling. The report goes on. During this time she did not utter a word, nor did a sigh escape her, but her countenance appeared quite composed, and her step firm. Arrived on the drop, the rope was in a moment round her neck. She clasped and raised her hands together, as if in fervent prayer, and, after a slight struggle, she was launched into eternity. The orderly manner in which the whole proceedings were conducted reflects much credit to the prison. That account was syndicated and published in many newspapers. Isn't it a very sad tale? A young girl falling for a man who would mistreat her. She was unable to cope and turned to killing her babies, probably thinking they would be better dead than alive. Who knows how the first and surviving child Jane was treated? It was a tough life. It may have been a relief when Rebecca was found guilty and escaped the grasp of her husband and her poor life. It's a sad tale, but it's a tale, obviously, of a woman who killed her own babies. Something not to be forgotten. And it happened right here in the county of Wiltshire, starting in Bratton, in the Westbury, and finishing up at Devizes Prison which closed and was demolished in 1922. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much indeed for watching. If you're not a subscriber yet, please click the subscribe button. Click the notification bell and you'll be told every time a new video is uploaded. And if you'd like to leave a comment and give it a thumbs up, please do. It'd be great to hear from you. Thanks ever so much. Do take care and we'll see you in the next video.